congratulations on reaching this video. You've already got your sprite working with a static animation, meaning that uh, the girl is not uh, flowing in the wind or uh, dropping down with a parachute as in this, but she's static and she's moving. With a simple modification, we can add the animation frames, which we'll explain in this video, to get her to look like she's moving in the wind so that when she drops down from a, a platform or an airplane or a cliff, you, you can see her, her um, parachute rustling in the wind. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get started. Previous video, we have a static sprite. So the sprite only consists of one frame. I'm using Glide 005 here from this uh, set of PNG images. I'm gonna select all the glides. So there's 10 frames here and they have minor differences. I'm gonna use a tool called Texture Packer. Uh, there's many tools like this. Uh, this is just the one that I'm using uh, for this demonstration. I'm gonna align it into a single sprite sheet for convenience. I should cut it down to a nine cell of animation. It looks pretty similar. I have it in assets images. It's the same directory as the other uh, single cell sprites. So one of them is now a multi-cell sprite sheet. The process is almost exactly the same as the sprite component. Instead of sprite component, simply call it sprite animation component. I'm going to change the variable so that it's obvious. I'm going to call the variable now girl animation. The next step is to load the actual sprite sheet, the graphic, which is in PNG format that we have in the assets images directory with uh, the same command. It's await images.load and then it's the file name of the uh, sprite sheet. We next need to set up the size of the sprite. So it's an animated sprite. In the example above, I put the size in line with the uh, cascade, but now I'm gonna create a separate variable for a sprite size, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. The next step is to set up the sprite animation data. And within the data, you're gonna to have to input some information, such as the number of frames that you have in your sprite sheet, if you recall, uh, in our sprite sheet, we're using nine frames that we put together from the individual images. So the amount here is going to be nine for nine frames. So after we get the nine frames in, the step time is the time between each frame. So this is configurable. Uh, I'm just gonna use a static value of 0 0.3 now. Obviously if the girl is falling faster, you can cut down that time, but we have a simplistic example now. So I'm just using a constant rate um, depending, uh, it doesn't vary depending on how fast she falls. And the vector size here is the texture size that's on the actual sprite sheet per frame. So that's 152 by 142 pixels per frame. Now you get to the stage where you can create the girl animation. Sprite animation component dot from frame data. And then you just have the name of the sprite sheet and the sprite data, which you created in the previous step. I've also added the starting position of the girl of two fix D times uh, 150. Then you simply add the girl animation. We're going to replace the girl with the animation. Now I can use the hot reload functions of Flutter. It's amazing. The uh, girls move a bit too slowly. I cut down the step time to 0 0.1. Uh, I still think she's moving a little bit too slowly, especially if she's falling in the wind. So I went down to 0 0.05. And at this point, uh, when I do the hot restart, uh, looks like pretty reasonable, depending on the rate of the fall. You can also you have the starting position just to show how to do the editing with the flutter uh, hot restart you can kind of get her more in the center uh, 
keep adjusting the speed of the animation to so that it gets to a realistic setting for how you'd want it to look. Since it was hard to see the animation, I increased the uh, displayed or the, the rendered size of the sprite by 40%. So she's bigger now to make it easier to see the motion. And I also adjusted the launch height to uh, 30 pixels. So we already have the game logic for the girl that was a sprite. All we need to do is change the, uh, the, the variable girl to girl animation. So we're keeping the exact same game logic to move the, the sprite around and also to check for bounds. Remember, we have a very rudimentary uh, physics. It doesn't adjust for gravity. And also the bounds is not the actual mobile phone bounds. Uh, we just set up some sim simple bounds for the demonstration. But that's it. Now the girl will be falling and she has the rudimentary bounds uh, detection. So I control her in both ways. We're off and running here. Imagine that she's going too slowly. So I'm going to set up a, a variable speed here, uh, set it to 2.0. So it should be dropping at double the original speed. I think in the actual game, you'd want to vary the speed based on how far she's jumping. Um, it would take gravity into account. But let's see how it goes with the current uh, just 2.0. She's too big right now. Right? I just increased it to make it easy to see the animation. The idea is that there'd be uh, some type of platformer. And then she can jump from one level to another level. She'd have to be uh, much smaller, but then it'd be difficult to see. So I'll, I'll drop some type of platform in as the background and we can see how she looks like with that. Congratulations on getting the sprite working with the girl in motion. So you learned how to use a sprite sheet and use the powerful flutter flame uh, animation component to get the um, the sprite working in an animated behavior. Uh, there's many of these sprite sheets out there, so you could pick the type of uh, animation that you want. Uh, it's getting pretty fun. And we'll put a background in with some collision detection, so we can see, so we have the girl interacting with objects on the screen. It's getting pretty close to being able to build your own mobile app, your own game on iOS or Android and have a user interaction plus the character on the, the sprite interacting with the virtual world within the mobile app. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, subscribe and check out the next video, which we'll be working on more features to your mobile app game.